Hello Mayo here, and welcome to this Mortal Kombat 1 modding tutorial. Today I'm going to cover a new tool called UBL. It stands for Universal Blueprint Loader, created by Ghosty Face, and allows you to expand the possibilities of modding characters with specific parameters. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain the requirements, the tools needed, and of course, each parameter UVL provides for you. Without further ado, let's get started. This tutorial will cover from the most basic to the most advanced stuff you can do with UVL. For now, you only need three main components for your mod to work. One, UVL framework, which is what we are going to cover here. Two, MK12T TH mod loader made by the Thiny, which is needed for UBL to work. 3. Unreal Engine version 4.27 Ghosty has made a fork of it, which has useful fixes from Coolboy's fork. You need an account in GitHub for this one. Everything will be listed in the description of this video. Let's proceed with the installation. For mods hosted in Nexus mods, you need an account to fetch them. So create one before proceeding. Click on the UBL framework link I left in the description. You will be greeted with the mod's description, what it does, and what's compatible with it. Click on Files, then on Main Files. You will find UBL Download. Click on Manual Download. Nexus will prompt you that you will need another mod for it to work, but we'll get to it later. For now, just click on Download, then click on Slow Download. It will start a countdown and download UBL. Now that we got UBL, let us get the mod loader. Do as before. Click the mod loader link. Go to files. Now pay attention. Because this will depend on what you do. If you use MK1 hook, then you must use the first download. However, if you don't use it, then click on the version that is standalone. Nexus will prompt you that it needs the hook. The standalone version does not need it. So click on download. And again, press slow download. Wait for the timer, and it will begin to download the mod loader. Let's get Ghosty's fork of Unreal Engine. So, again, click on the GitHub link. It might show as a 404 not found, so create a GitHub account to have access to it. Once inside, you will see the files. Downloads the one ended in .001 and .002. Sit back and grab a coffee, because it might take a while. Once it's downloaded, drag these files wherever it's comfortable for you. Then, right click on the .001 file, either with WinRoar or 7-zip, and extract it. It will begin extracting Unreal Engine. Important! To be able to work with Unreal Engine, you need Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2022. I'll leave a tutorial in the description. I forgot something. To be able to do this process correctly, you need one more tool called FModel which is a program that allows you to open, explore, and extract files from Unreal Engine games. It will also be in the description. This will help you reference the models you want to mod, as in exact names and formats. Also inside UBL Framework, there's a documentation guide that is a work in progress. It contains a sample of everything that UBL offers. As for customized meshes, we're going to use Blender, as specifically, the version 3.6.1. Also a plugin that allows us to import PSK and PSA files. With these, you can work on your custom model. Now, open the zip file of the mod loader. You will see three files inside. dsound.dll mk12tth.asi mk 12 tthini Pick these three and drop them into your Mortal Kombat 1's Win64 folder. The mod loader is installed. A dialog box will pop up, giving you a disclaimer of it being free. This confirms that the mod loader is loaded correctly. Next, for UBL, open the 7 z file, and inside you will find a MK12 folder. Drag and drop it inside of your Mortal Kombat 1's root directory. Then, a crucial step is needed for the game to recognize UBL. You must find the file, 
engine.ini, for which you need to open your local application data folder. Follow this carefully. Hold the Windows key, and then press R. The execute window will appear. Write, percentage sign, local app data percentage sign, all together. Press enter. You'll be inside your local application data. Inside, find the MK12 folder. Saved, Steam, Config, Windows No Editor, and finally open the engine.ini file. You will see that it has a lot of paths, but we are looking to make UBL to work. So scroll all the way down, press enter twice to make a new line, and paste the code that is in the description. Save your file, and with that, UBL shall be ready to load in the game. Next, let's get F-Model. Go to the website listed in the description below. Click on download now, it will automatically download. Like with Unreal Engine, place it where it is more comfortable for you to work with. Since you are opening F-Model for the first time, you need to set it up so that it reads Mortal Kombat 1's pack files. The directory selector will pop up in your screen at first. In the section detected game, it might appear listed, if not, listed manually. In UE versions, select the one that says Mortal Kombat 1 version 4.27. Then point the directory to your game's pack files. Click OK. All the pack files inside may appear with a cross on their icons. That means they are encrypted. Each Unreal Engine game has a specific AES key. So go to Directory, click AES, and in there, F-Model will ask you for a key. I left it in the description. Copy and paste it in there. Click OK. Now your pack files should be with a green icon on them. You can now open and explore the files. Next, we're going to set up Blender. Start the program. If you're using it for the first time, it might prompt you to set your settings on how you would like to use it, so that is more comfortable for you. If not, then it will prompt you with your saved blend files. Download the Python file from the GitHub repository. Again, the link will be in the description. Once you're in Blender, click on Edit, Preferences, and a new window will open. Click on Add-ons, then click on Install, and choose the Python file you downloaded. Once installed, go on the bottom left of that window, press it, and then click Save Preferences. Then close that window. Your Blender is now ready to import PSK files for you to edit into the game. Before we proceed with the introduction to UBL, download the sample provided by Ghosty in GitHub. Go to the web page and press the green button, and choose Download Zip, and it will give you the sample project to open in Unreal Engine. Save it wherever you will save your future projects. Go to the Unreal Engine folder, click on Engine, Binaries, Win64, and locate the EXE called UE4 Editor. Make a quick access for you to open it easily. Now you have everything set to start learning UBL. Now that everything is set, we are going to take a look at the UBL sample. Open the Unreal Engine Editor. You made a quick access. The first time might take a while to open, as it probably will compile shaders before starting. So I suggest getting a drink. Once in the Select or Create a Project screen, it will ask you either to create a new project, or open an existing one. In this case, we are going to do the latter. Click on More, then click on Browse, and locate where you saved the sample. Unreal Engine may tell you that it was made in a different version of it, and it will lose data. To be cautious, open a copy instead. The engine will create a copy of the project adapted to this specific version. Wait for another moment while it loads the project. Once the UI shows up, you will see a lot of things, but do not panic. Just follow my instructions, and you will be fine. On the middle left part besides filters, click the button. It will expand a small area, which will show you the paths of the files you're packing into this project. The sample contains what you need to make your mod, from the materials needed, in case you're doing a customized model, and the custom blueprint. 
which is the core of the magic of this framework. Inside, you will see a blue file called Sample Blueprint Mod. This is our blueprint, which is all you need to tell the game to load your stuff instead. Double click on it, make sure you are on the event graph screen. Now inside, you will find a lot of things into the graph. It must be a nightmare for you right now, and probably ask yourself, what the fuck is all this shit? I'll cover each one of these red boxes. These are called custom events, and these triggers the specific functions we are going to use later on. Now we are going to cover each one of the events in a plain and simple way. This is the last part of the theory, and in the next videos, we will see how each one of these work within the project. For now, let's break down each event that UBL offers, and eventually, more that it can offer in the future. The first event is called Load Assets. It is used to load assets provided in a string array. You can load meshes, materials, textures, blueprints, movesets, and more. Take a look at the example here. We are loading the blueprint of Soul Smoke, the default material of Katana's first skin, and the moveset of Melina. The array must be connected to the Asset Pass option of the blue box, which are called Actions. The next events must have their assets loaded using Load Asset, or else they won't work. Next up is Change Voice, which as it says, it changes the character's voice for the one you provide. Example, you can change or swap Katana's voice for Melina, and vice versa. Here's an example of how it's set. Here, it's changing Melina's voice for ghost faces. These voices are found in the WY's audio, switches, switches all, SWGP character folder. You can take a look at these using F model. The next event on the list is change grunts. This one changes the grunting noises of the characters when they are punched or making special moves, and so on, for the one you provide. In the example below, it's changing Smoke's grunts for Cyber Smoke's, or LK7T2. Grunts can be found in game, WI's audio, switches, switches, all, SWGP grunt folder. You can find these with F model. Moving on, we have change moveset. As it says, it allows you to change the moveset of a character you pick for the one you want, even Floyd's. Here, in the example, the action is going to change Katana's moveset for Scorpions. Moveset assets are located in Game Disk, Shared Game, Generated Scripts folder. You can check them out with F model. Then we have Change Blood. With this, we can set a character's blood to any color you want. Example, in my Cyber Sub-Zero mod, I made it blue as it was in Mortal Kombat 9, and for Cyber Noob Saigon, made it completely black, like a total robot. The example provided shows how Ghosty tried to make an accurate tint of Garas's blood from Mortal Kombat 11, but you can make your own set if you so desire. Now, we have Change Skin FX. This allows you change the color of the particles that a character has. So far, I only saw it applied on Raiden and you can make his lightning particles to any color you desire. Check the example provided. Here it's green. It's perfect if you want to tweak some small details you deem needed. Continuing on with the list, we have the fun parts. Here we have the event called Change Face. As it says, it allows you to change a character's face with the one you provide. There are no limits regarding changing faces among the existing ones in game. Although it's possible to use custom faces, I doubt the expressions will work. I did this for my cyborg mods. And by the way, when I meant no limits, I mean it. Check this out.
let's keep on moving. I will not sleep tonight anyway thanks to that. Next up, we have Change Hair, which you can use without any limits, like putting the women's hairstyles on the men, and vice versa. It's all up to you. If you set the hair value on none, your modded character will be bald. Here in the example, the action is set to change Jax's hair for smokes. You go figure out how it will look. Change body. We'll do exactly as it says, with the same conditions. Check the example here. With this set, Katana can have Melina's body. Picture it, if you like it. This event is something most of the modding community has been trying to figure out. Change cloth. With this, you can replace the cloth of your character for any of the already existing ones. As of now, there's no way to successfully integrate customized cloth with working physics. The example below shows a set that will change Scorpion's physics cloth for Havocs. The following events involve intercepting materials. Have you always wanted to make your mod compatible with the seasonal skins? Well, each one of these will override the textures of your base material. The first example shows a set ready to replace Frost's skin for Ermax. This material is the one used for the female Ermac NPC. However, if you use an empty array, UBL tells the game not to override any material, and you must follow the hierarchical structure in which the mesh's materials are listed. Sounds complicated, right? With the practice, you will get it. This event here allows you to change the animations of a character. This is usually set if you change the body without using Blender, which is a technique I personally don't recommend. I reckon that it can be used for more advanced stuff that I won't explain for now. If you change the face of a character, there will be a chance that it won't work correctly. The common case of this is Melina, since she uses two face models in the game, pre-Target and Target. Attempting to change her face back to the human one may work temporarily, but once she's on gameplay state, her face will deform because it's not using the correct facial animations. This event corrects that. I still don't know how to use it properly, but the moment I know, I will explain it here. The last two events change the gear of certain characters. Change gear mask replaces the target character's mask, whether it be their gear piece or not, with the provided one. There are generally two ways this event can be used, either replacing the mask or simply removing it. Keep in mind that gear mask and gear class are distinctly different assets. The mask class only needs to be changed for characters for whom their gear is not their mask. Otherwise, this should only be changed if you want to completely remove the mask. The first example shows the case when a character's gear is their mask. In the case of Sub-Zero, he has a mask for gear, so in here, we can change it by targeting his gear, and then set for the one we want to replace. However, if you want to completely remove the mask, you can do so by setting the gear mask and class to none. Now what happens when a character's mask is not their gear? Here in the case of Kitana, her mask is not changeable, so we can change it by filling in the gear class section. If you want to remove it completely, however, all you need to do is set it on none, and Kitana will have her full facial expressions. The same principles apply to the gear cow. In characters like Noob Saibot, they have a cow with a mask. Like before, you can set their cows to be different as you wish, or you can completely remove the cow, and in result, his head will be completely exposed with facial animations too. You made it to the end of part one. Thanks for watching. Your time and patience. I know you're eager to try and make good mods with UBL, and I plan to cover anything it offers. I'll see you in the next one.